This country of ours has found immigration as a source of vitality, not a burden. This is what has been part of America's genius, different than any other country. That's our destiny. I'm very proud of this body. President. The Senator from Vermont. Mr. President, I appreciate the comments of the distinguished majority leader, and I will be <laughs> speaking further on this uh, matter later this week, or this coming week. I thank him and everybody who worked with him for getting us here. You know, I'm reminded that legislating is about making tough choices. It's not about staying on the sidelines and complaining. You can't get a perfect solution enacted. I've been privileged to serve in this great body for 38 years because of the trust of the people of Vermont. In my time here, <clears throat> in those 38 years, I've rarely seen such commitment to an issue that I've seen over the last six months to comprehensive immigration reform. I think of the dozens of witnesses who came before the Judiciary Committee, like Jose Antonio Vargas and Gabby Pacheco, who called in the Senate to achieve bipartisan immigration reform. I think of the hours we spent, Republicans and Democrats alike, in the Judiciary Committee considering amendments and debating this bill. And what was initially a proposal from the Gang of Eight became, through an extensive committee process, the product of a group of 18. And since the bill was reported to the Senate floor, bipartisan talks have continued. The circle of members supporting it has continued to grow. I'm going to speak next week more about those members, but I hope my friend and neighbor from New York, Senator Schumer, won't be embarrassed when I mention something very few people know about him. He has a 10-pound battery on his cell phone. It is the only way he could keep making those calls that harass us and nudge us, nudge us, and move us at all hours of the day and night. <clears throat> So I, uh, I just give away that secret. That's the way he's able to do it. <clears throat> that and the fact he hasn't slept for several weeks. Now, senators have been negotiating for days, late into the night, trying to gain more Republican support for this important immigration reform legislation. Senators Hoven and Corker have put together an aggressive package. Though I had new Republican support to our bipartisan effort, and for that progress, I'm grateful. Now, it is an understatement to say this is not the amendment I would have drafted. And even some of the co-sponsors of it might not have. I'm disappointed in many parts of it. The modification to the Leahy Amendment before us reads like a Christmas wish list for Halliburton. I'm sure there are federal contracting firms high-fiving at the prospect of all the spending demanded by some of our friends on the other side in this amendment. A litany of expensive services, technology, hardware mandated by this package is combined with the thing that bothers me, an inexplicable waiver of many of our normal contracting rules. That is a potential that we must watch out for for waste and fraud. You know, it's astounding that we have not learned the hard lessons we learned in Iraq. All of us should remember the disgraceful conduct dem demonstrated by some private companies in Iraq, companies that will now be seeking contracts here, which was uncovered by the work of the Special Inspector General for Iraq. I believe all my friends, both Republicans and Democrats on this floor, will join with me in saying these border provisions are going to require significant congressional oversight. And I had oversight of the inspectors general. Because when the inspectors general looked in Iraq, that's when we found out what was going on. I worry that when many of my friends talk about border security, the high cost of these projects absent from the discussion. When we talk about programs that help children live near the poverty line, or people who need medical research for what would otherwise be an incurable disease, and suddenly fiscal concerns are paramount. I think that we hear too much about spending money on the border, on one border, rather than come up with a comprehensive solution that takes pressure off that border. And this package is border security on steroids. 
Some are calling it a surge. And that military reference makes sense because it is going to militarize hundreds of American communities in the Southwest. But with a border surge, I say this as a compliment to my friends on the other side of the aisle, comes additional Republican support for the rest of the essential pieces to reunite families, to provide a path to citizenship for millions, and spur significant job growth in our country. And that I do support, and I thank all the senators, both Republicans and Democrats, how to bring that about. One of the reasons I stayed as chairman of the Senate Judiciary Committee is because of this once-in-a-generation chance for us to truly reform our immigration system. It's a tragic problem. It calls out for a comprehensive solution. There are too many people, too many families, kept apart because of our broken immigration system. There are too many people living in the shadows who should be allowed to join, gain their citizenship. We cannot fail. We owe it to them, to people like Jose and Gabby, and so many others, to get legislation passed. So while I do not agree with any of the border demands, I will support this modification of amendment because I'm making the tough choice that's better than not making progress toward passage of this critical bill. And again, I applaud the fact that I don't want anybody to mistake what I'm saying. There are many, many areas, both Republicans and Democrats, that come together that I do applaud. And I yield the floor. The Senator from North Dakota. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, we've now filed the Hoven Corker Border Security Amendment. Uh, I believe that the first order of business for immigration reform is to secure the border. Americans want immigration reform. Of that, there is no doubt. But they want us to get it right, and that means first and foremost, securing the border. I want to thank the uh, distinguished senator from the great state of Tennessee for his uh, ceaseless efforts and untiring work uh, to really craft an amendment that puts border security first. That's exactly what we've worked to do. And I also want to thank the co-sponsors that we've been able to bring on board uh, for this effort. They include Senator John McCain, Senator Lindsey Graham, Senator Marco Rubio, Senator Jeff Flake, Senator Kelly Ayotte, Senator Dean Heller, Senator Orrin Hatch, Senator Lisa Murkowski, Senator Mark Kirk, but also, on a bipartisan basis, we have Democrat senators as well. Uh, Senator Joe Manchin, Senator Pryor, Senator Mark Begich, Senator Donnelly. We want to thank all of these co-sponsors that show this is a bipartisan effort to secure the border as a first step in comprehensive immigration reform. That is what this is all about. We provide five significant criteria. Some have called them triggers, requirements, conditions that must be met to ensure the border is secure before there are any green cards, before uh, illegal immigrants can get to a permanent legal status, a green card status. We have tough requirements that must be met to ensure the border is secure. First and foremost, it's a comprehensive southern border security plan. It's $3.2 billion worth of technology, planes, uh, unmanned aircraft, sensors, all on the border, spelled out in this legislation that ensures that we have a secure border. That must be met before there are any green cards, and that's where we start. In addition, 20,000 more Border Patrol agents on the border to not only detect people trying to come across, but to turn them back. 700 miles of fencing on the border. These are things that Republicans have repeatedly asked for as part of securing the border. We put them right in the bill. In addition, we have to have a mandatory national e-verify system in place and operating so that we enforce work, workplace law so we not only have a secure border, but we take away the incentive to come here illegally because you won't be able to get a job. That combined with a guest, pro, uh, guest worker program that works means then when people come, they come legally and they go back home. And finally, we have an electronic exit entry exit system at all of the international airports and seaports. All of those things must be met before legal permanent resident status, before green card status. This is about securing the border first. 
Again, I want to particularly thank my distinguished colleague from Tennessee, Senator Corker, for all his hard efforts, as well as uh, all of our co-sponsors on this legislation. We are reaching out to everybody, and we want to work together on a bipartisan basis. This is about securing the border first and doing comprehensive immigration reform and doing it right. And with that, I would uh, like to yield the floor and uh, again uh, note the tremendous efforts of my uh, distinguished colleague, the Senator from Tennessee. The Senator from Tennessee. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I want to reciprocate and talk about the wonderful leadership that the Senator from North, North Dakota has provided. I have enjoyed working with him. I've enjoyed his foresight, his rationality, his reasoning, his common sense. All of the traits that he displayed as governor of the great state of North Dakota. And I want to thank him for the friendship and for the opportunity to work on a piece of legislation that, candidly, I'm more proud to have done what I've done over the last week than anything I've done since I've been in the United States Senate. So I want to thank you for that. I think uh, I would just ask the people, I know we've had a lot of people on the floor that have criticized uh, this legislation without reading it. I know it's been called a, a magic amendment. I would just say to people that care about border security, and obviously numbers of people on our side of the aisle care deeply about that, to read the bill. I want to thank the majority leader for his leadership in this effort, for his comments earlier. By filing cloture today on this amendment, it's going to give everybody in this body and in the nation to read this piece of legislation for 75 hours before the cloture vote occurs. So, Mr. Leader, I thank you for the process that you have put in place and, and for your comments. I want to thank the senator from New York. My last call last night at 12.33 was with him, and my first call early, early this morning was with him. I want to thank him for the way that he has worked with us to try to, to work through Republican sensibilities so that we have a bill that not only meets the needs of the Democratic side of the aisle, but we have a bill that meets the needs of the Republican side of the aisle, which is why we all came here. I want to thank him for his leadership and his earnest efforts in this regard. And I want to say that I believe, and we were talking about this earlier, I believe we do have a historic opportunity to deal with the issues of security that many of our citizens across the country care about, but at the same time, allow 11 million people to come out of the shadows and work in the light and be a part of this great, great nation in a way that, that is, has dignity and respect. So I want to thank all involved. I want to again turn to the senator from North Dakota and thank him for his relentless efforts over the last nine days. Tell him that I look forward to helping cause this to go across the finish line. And I know this is just the beginning. There are going to be some trials and tribulations, and there's going to be a lot of controversy. I understand that. But I think all of us came here to solve the big, big problems of our nation. And to me, that's a privilege, it's an honor, and certainly it's been an honor to work with you. And with that, I yield the floor to the distinguished senator from New York. The senator from New York. Thank you, and I want to thank my colleague from Tennessee for his hard work, his diligence. One of the hallmarks of a truly outstanding legislator is the ability to walk in the other person's shoes. It's something that we should all try to do, to see why the other side thinks differently than you and come to meet somewhere in the middle. That is what my good friend from Tennessee has done throughout the years he's been in the Senate, and he's had no finer moment, I completely agree, than this strong effort on immigration reform. I want to say the same about my colleague from North Dakota. I know for both of you, this is not easy. This is courageous. And you're doing the right thing for your country. And with that, there's a great deal of satisfaction. I want to thank our great leader. His steadfast, quiet style helps us get through just about anything in this body. He is my friend, and he is a great leader. I'm proud to serve under him. I want to thank the chairman of our committee as well for his steadfast leadership. And the other seven members of the Gang of Eight we have come to become friends. We have argued with each other. We have bonded with each other. But most of all, 
we are united in this effort to make our nation better by fixing our broken immigration system. It's a wacky system. It turns away people who will create jobs and lets people cross the border who will take away American jobs. It makes no sense. And, Mr. President, we are now ready to move forward further with this amendment. The bipartisanship of comprehensive immigration reform launched in January continues to sail forward with the acceptance by the Gang of Eight of this Hoven Corker amendment. Let's make no mistake about it. Nothing in this amendment or the bill satisfies anyone completely. But together, the amendment and the bill provide a sturdy craft that will weather the upcoming storms we face and get us finally to our long desired port, comprehensive immigration reform signed into law. It's easy, Mr. President, to focus on things, for people to focus on things they don't like in this bill. And that is what has sunk effort after effort after effort. Instead, I urge all my colleagues, from the most liberal to the most conservative, from the most democratic to the most republican, to look at the so many positive things in this amendment and this bill. The American people have told us over and over again that they will be fair and accept common sense solutions for the 11 million living in the shadows and for future immigration reform if they're convinced there won't be wave after wave of future illegal immigration. And that is just what this bill does. That's why it's a turning point. This amendment, the offering of this amendment is a turning point. We've always known there would be large numbers of Democrats to support final passage of this bill in the Senate. But this amendment gives us the real chance of getting a very significant number of our Republican colleagues. I believe a large bipartisan vote in this body will change the dynamic in the House to make them far more amenable to passing immigration reform. I believe a large bipartisan vote in this body will wake up our colleagues on the other side in the House, ask them to live up to their responsibility to fix our broken immigration system for the good of the country. Hopefully, as congressmen look how their senators voted, they will be influenced by it and take the same kind of courageous stand that the senators from Tennessee, North Carolina, North Dakota rather, and many others have taken. Mr. President, there have been three main objections to comprehensive immigration reform as we've moved forward. First, that the process wasn't going to be open. Second, that it was going to cost the taxpayers a lot of money. And third, that it would not close down our borders. I believe with this amendment, we answer all three resoundingly. On the first, the fact that we need an open process. This process has been tremendously, completely, transparently open. The bill was filed way in advance of the committee, president, of the committee uh, markup of the bill. Amendment after amendment was debated and debated and debated. Many amendments were accepted, many from the other side, many were rejected, but it was an open process. And the leader has endeavored to make that process be open on this, on the floor as well. Some others, some of whom have actually complained about the lack of openness of the process, have delayed our ability to offer amendments. But hopefully that will end soon. The second objection, that will cost money, that was successfully debunked this week by the CBO report on this bill. It said three things. It said first, it will reduce the deficit by $175 billion in this decade and another $700 billion in the next decade. There's a lot more deficit reduction in this immigration reform bill than many other bills 
that we have voted for that specific, whose specific goal is deficit reduction. Second, it will grow our economy. Imagine, it's almost like an elixir. GDP grows over 3% this decade and another 5% in the next decade. What we have struggled to do to get even a quarter as much growth with programs that either spend money or cut taxes, but the vitality of humanity, particularly the humanity that wishes to risk all and come to America, is perhaps the greatest economic engine of them all. And the CBO recognizes what that would do. And third, it will create jobs at a time when we worry about the future job market. We worry about the ratio of retirees to those who are working, this bill is the best antidote. And finally, on the border, there is no bill tougher on the border, there is no proposal tougher on the border than this one. We create a virtual human fence. There are enough border agents here to be on guard from San Diego, California, to Brownsville, Texas, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, that they will only be 1,000 feet apart for every minute the clock ticks. No one, no one will be able to cross the border with that number of people on the border. It is a virtual human fence. And many have asked just for that, to protect the border. So, these have been the three major objections. We have answered them all resoundingly. We have answered the fact that the process may not be open by making it transparent and open. We have answered the view that it will cost money by showing it will save money. And we have answered the view that the border will not be secured by the addition of the Hoven Corker Amendment. There's only one other objection. These three objections, lack of openness in the process, costing the government money, not closing the border, are the stated objections. There's only one other objection. It's usually unstated. And that is the earned path to citizenship. If portions of this bill were voted on separately, most of our colleagues who oppose the bill would vote for them. They would certainly vote for more border protection. They would certainly vote for deficit reduction. They would certainly vote for a future immigration flow that creates jobs. So why are they voting against it? They simply don't believe in a path to citizenship. Now that's fine, but it ought to be stated. The beauty of the Corker Amendment, the corker hoven Amendment, the beauty of the corker hoven Amendment is it rips bare the real objection. It is no longer border security. It is, I don't want a path to citizenship that some might profess. So let's debate it on that issue. And by the way, Mr. President, it's no mistake, no accident, that the House wants to do pieces individually because they don't believe in a path to citizenship, those who profess that. But mark our words here today, no bill, no bill on immigration reform will be signed into law by the President without a path to citizenship. It can be an earned path, it can be a tough path, it can be a difficult path, but it is a real path. And it is essential for any immigration reform. So those who think that they can get the pieces of this bill without comprehensive reform are sadly, sadly mistaken. So in conclusion, Mr. President, we're just about halfway through our process. We still have a long road to go. The good ship SS immigration reform will weather many more storms. But the addition of Corker Hoven gives us a new mast, new wind in our sails. 
And I am confident if we stay united together, Democrats and Republicans of goodwill, we will see before the end of this year comprehensive immigration reform signed into law by the President of the United States. I yield. Mr. President. The Majority Leader. Before my friend leaves, you know, I study legislation. I have worked on this matter for many, many years. As the leader, I've directed more, more attention to this than any other issue. So I understand the bill quite well. But the one thing I want to make sure before my friend from New York leaves the floor is this. I always thought we could pass the bill. I told my friend that. As replacing Senator Kenny, that subcommittee chair. But no one, no one, 100 senators, no one other than the senator from New York thought we could get 70 votes. I doubted he could get 70 votes. He knows I doubted that. No one in this body thought we could get 68, 72 votes except him. And so um, I have watched a lot of things on this floor. Long, I've been here, I've been in Congress 31 years. Not as long as the Senate from New York, but I've been in the Senate longer than he has. And for the vision to see this could take place is remarkable. And I so admire his ability to hang tight when everyone was saying, leave this alone. Just get a bill passed. And he wasn't satisfied with that. That was not good enough because Senator Schumer alone, alone, no one, if, he could, if there's somebody that I missed, he can tell me about that, but I don't know of anyone that agreed with him. So, uh, Mr. Subcommittee Chair, uh, thank you for a vision. But, but for this big vote that we're going to have, um, I'm not sure that we could have gotten it done. Perhaps. But this, this, is, this is a pathway to satisfying the demands of this country. The demands of this country, what is in this legislation is agreed on by the vast majority of Democrats, the vast majority of Republicans, and the vast majority of independents. So thank you for your vision. Well, I thank the leader for his very kind words. He's a kind man as well as a strong man. For being my friend and for being a great leader, I would just add one addendum. There were others who thought I could help put together a proposal that would get 70 votes, and we're not there yet. We're climbing each day, but we're not there yet. But I think we will get there. And those are my staff, who I thank. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Alexander.
ask unanimous consent to terminate the quorum call. Without objection. As consent, we now proceed to period of morning business for senators and that we be allowed to speak for up to 10 minutes each. Without objection. I ask unanimous consent that a time be determined by me in consultation with Senator McConnell. The Senate proceed to executive session to consider calendar number 179, that there be 30 minutes for debate, equally divided in the usual forum. Following use, relating back to that time, the Senate proceed to vote with no energy, action, or debate on the nomination. The motion to reconsider be considered made and laid on the table with no intervening action or debate, and no further motion to be in order, that any related statements be printed on the record, and that President Obama be immediately notified of the Senate's action and sent then to resume legislative session. Without objection. I unanimous consent at a time be determined by me in consultation with the Republican leader. The Senate proceed to executive session to consider a calendar 180, that there be 30 minutes for debate equally divided in the usual forum. Following the use, we're leading back at that time, the Senate proceed to vote with no intervening action or debate on the nomination. Motion we consider be considered made and laid on the table with no intervening action or debate, and that no further statements, um, no further motions be in order. Any related statements be printed in the record. That the President be immediately notified of Senate's action on the Senate and resume legislative session. Without objection. I ask unanimous consent, the Senate proceed to ask Res 181. Okay. Clerk will report. Senate Resolution 181, recognizing the sesquicentennial of West Virginia and commemorating its history, people, and culture. Without objection, the Senate will proceed to the measure. I ask unanimous consent the resolution be agreed to, the preamble be agreed to, and no the motion we consider be laid on the table with no intervening action or debate. Without objection. I ask unanimous consent we proceed to S-Res 182. Clerk will report. Senate Resolution 182, congratulating the American Dental Hygienist Association and so forth. Without objection, the Senate will proceed to the measure. I ask you to ask the Senate the resolution be agreed to, the preamble be agreed to, the motion we consider be laid on the table with no intervening action or debate. Without objection. Mr. President, I ask you to ask the Senate that when the Senate completes its business day, it adjourn until noon, 12 p.m. on Monday, June 24th. That following the prayer and the pledge, that morning RB deem expired, the general proceedings be approved to date, and the time for the two leaders be reserved for use later in the day. And that following any leader remarks, the Senate resume consideration of the immigration bill, and that the time until 5.30 be equally divided and controlled between the two managers of the designees. That the filing deadline for second degree amendments to the Leahy Amendment number 1183 as modified be 4 p.m. on Monday. Without objection. So, Mr. President, on, at 5.30 on Monday, there will be a cloture vote on the Leahy Amendment. If there's no further business to come before the Senate, I ask that it be that it adjourn under the previous order. Sen the uh, Senate stands adjourned until 12 noon on Monday, June 24th. The Senate's been working on the immigration bill. The measure increases border security and workplace enforcement, allows additional high- and low-skilled workers into the country, and creates a 13-year path to citizenship for illegal immigrants. They're trying to clear amendments in effort to avoid a weekend session. Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid has said the bill needs to be finished before the 4th of July break. The House is gone for the weekend. They return on Tuesday. Among the bills next week, offshore oil drilling and agriculture spending. You can see live House coverage on C-SPAN. You can learn more about the members of both the House and Senate in our Congressional Directory. It's a handy guide to the current Congress.